Okay. So with uh, Florida, I guess, what are some of the differences from last year's team that sort of stands out for you this time around? Yeah, I think we're both different. I think when you looked at that series uh, for the national championship, real marquee players, you know, Cruz on our side, Langford on their side, uh, even though Skeens didn't pitch, Skeens on our side, uh, Sprode and Waldrop on their side. Uh, you know, good players for them. Moved on, Rivera, um, Rappel, those types of things. Uh, same for us, you know, Trey Morgan, Ty Floyd, you know, that type of thing. Below so. So that's how you get there. You know, that's not a surprise. And then I think we're similar in the fact this year is they have some guys that were there that maybe weren't those frontline guys that have moved up in in their pecking order on their team or – point of impact um, you know Hyman you know that uh, the guy that comes to mind obviously um, you know we both still have stars you know uh, they have Caglione we have White um, so I think there's a lot of similarities you know in, in that regard and uh, there's a bunch of guys like I said finding their way in, in new roles you know they have a great offense I mean as good as anybody in the country uh, really hit with power you know, can hit mistakes. You know, on the mound, uh, there's a little familiarity. Obviously, we saw Fisher and Neely in the finals. Um, you know, they saw a lot of our guys that pitch out of the pen in the finals. So, uh, but I, I think it's a completely different deal. I mean, I, I don't know that it could be more different. A lot of young guys, a lot of new faces on the team this, this year. How the uh, more experienced leaders on the team kind of help them flush last week and uh, move on to this series this weekend? Home? Well, we haven't lost back-to-back -back games all year, so I would say flushing uh, a bad game is the strength of, of this team so far. And, you know, you're going to get tested in our, our league. It's, it's the way that it is. Um, you know, it's almost like you win 16 games, you're hosting a regional now because the league is so much better than any other league um, out there right now. So I, I got some really good advice from a former coach in this league, you know, when I took the job of, like, Hey man, it's great. It's LSU, but you're gonna take some blows and some gut punches, and you know, staying level-headed and and focused on what you need to do to improve is gonna be super important uh, to your program's success. And um, so, you know, having older players that have had some of those gut punches, you know, even last year's team, which as good as you can be, had some gut punches um, and respond well. Um, this, these guys have done that so far. And, um, you know, you got to have the courage to get back in the ring against, a, obviously, another really good opponent. What makes uh, Caglian so difficult at the plate? Yeah, he's, he's going good right now. Um, had a huge weekend against A&M. Uh, bat speed and um, he's aggressive. I uh, feel like he knows what his pitch is, and he's, he's, he's going when he gets it. Um, you know, I think guys that can really – pull the ball with, with power and authority and drive it and consistently hit mistakes. Like there's a reason like he's pushed up there to a top, a lot of top draft boards. Um, and he's obviously, you know, equally talented on the mound, but um, yeah, he's, he's really good. What's Kate Anderson's role going forward? He's going to pitch important innings. Yeah. I mean, we love him. I mean, we just had a meeting about the pitching staff for an hour this morning and, you know, kind of each guy's sweet spot and, um, yeah, we think the, the sky's the, the limit, you know. I mean, um, we were just coming off to Tommy John. Like, I kind of wanted to get him in the game Tuesday, but he'd thrown Saturday, and we hadn't done a whole lot of short outing back-to-back, -back, so we just we turned it into bullpen and, and get him ready for this weekend. Uh, have you seen the pitchers respond this week, um, just, just in terms of approaching this, this week? Yeah, the guys, I mean, Again, the guys that threw Tuesday, that's a pretty good outing. That's a pretty good effort. That's five hits and one run on a board. And I mean, Javen was really sick on Tuesday night. Like, it just kind of came on, like, right before the game. And I, we might have thrown a shutout had he not, um, you know, throw, he went out there, got us out of the first, which was awesome. 
then we put up five, but he was in the dugout for a long time and just kind of lost his strength there. Uh, but outside of that inning, I couldn't be happier with Tuesday. Um, I think we ironed some things out, you know, uh, approach wise that I think will help. And, uh, you know, the, uh, Luke has thrown a bullpen. Gage has thrown a bullpen. You know, Dotter will throw one today. Uh, but the work seems good. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of first. I've said that, um, you know, first time on the road, first time in an environment like that um, for a lot of guys. And, you know, first time, you know, with that maybe whatever you want to call it, elevated competition. And, you know, I think I think we learned a lot. Now it's it's utilizing that to our – advantage going forward and um you know we put a lot of time in on making sure those guys are better this weekend when it comes to you mentioned ironing um, some things out was that just i guess learning what you have on your hands still because you have a lot of uh, newer guys especially in that pitching staff and just understanding i guess self like improving your own self-scouting i guess yeah that might be one way to say it um you know take a lot of pride in making sure we're lined up properly um and uh, certainly, uh, certainly could have been better, you know, last weekend in terms of that. And, um, you know, like I said, there's a few things that I think contribute to that. And, um, you know, I mean, we hadn't been tested really when Luke had pitched, you know, all year to this point. And um, they tested him a little bit. So it, it kind of stretched what we needed to do there at the end of the game. And and then they separated and so we saved pitching and we used all the bullets to make sure we won on saturday uh which was the right move and then as soon as we got back in the game sunday you know they they took a four run lead again and so uh, it was a unique series and um i feel like i feel like i learned i learned a lot you know about uh some of the guys and more importantly how we need to help them to be more successful in the games when you're when you're deciding to take a, a guy out, how much I guess com, how much in conversation are you with Coach Eski? Is that like oh, it's all those are all my decision. I mean, I've, I'm never going to pass anything to an assistant coach, or like at least to you guys, anyways. I mean, I might to them, um, but I make I make those decisions. Now, do I consult my staff? Absolutely. Yeah. And it, those are ongoing conversations. And um, like I said, we work pretty hard at that. And I feel like it's been very successful you know not just last year or to this point this year but that first year when we really had to grind on that um and it wasn't this weekend you know and um like i said we'll we'll take that we we're fortunate to win a game you know and um i think that win will prove valuable you know down the line and um i anticipate us being better on a mountain you know immediately how do you sort of prepare your guys to be ready to I'm in almost at a moment's notice. In this sort of, you know. Well, they, we have a process of that. Like, there's never like, oh, get hot, you're in the game. You know, yeah. um, it's we're way out in front of when the spots would be. I would say more often is like, hey, we have them over ready or over prepared, and then maybe the game change will shift, and then you maybe have to slide a guy back because you don't want to get them hot two or three times. That didn't happen last weekend at all, but. You know, I'm going to always err on the side that they have more than time than they need to be ready to come in. And they know exactly who, when, and what they need to do. It's just, you know, because some guys, it, you know, at least in the old days in the major leagues, it was, you know, this guy, I, I always know the seventh, I, this guy, yeah. I always know the eighth. But you never really do that, so I guess that's why I was. Well, know, I, I would love to be able to line it up like that. I just, you know, the college game, you know, um, I think the worst thing you can do to pitchers is ask them to do more than they're capable of doing. I think that's the absolute worst thing that you could do, and that's where you get exposed. And, you know, even in – I'll give you this as a, an example. Uh, Sunday's game. I didn't want to put anybody else in the game when we were down seven runs. Nick had done a really good – Nick Bronzini had done a really good job to end the sixth, I believe, and pitch good in the seventh. And it was probably a point where we could have – could have and should have moved him out of the game but given the score you know three outs to get seven runs and no one were playing a really good team on Tuesday like I left him out there and that wasn't maybe necessarily fair to him you know because he had done his job 
and the longer we exposed him, you know, the less effective that it would probably make him against a really good team. So I just try not to do that you know, as much as we possibly can. How do you explain to a guy that I'm taking you out here even though, you know, you've done your job because, you know, the guys are – They want to pitch. They want yeah, to absolutely. Pitch. I don't want them if they don't want to pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually, you know, try to com just communicate. Um, in the moment, I'm worried about getting the next guy out. Like we're bringing somebody in to get the next guy out. Uh, but there's a lot of follow-up, you know, and um, really what we're trying to streamline now – is ensuring those guys know their path to outs and that they execute their path to outs, then they can start to expand and do more. But do they know when they're heading coming into the game that I have four hitters here? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Here. And that's really effective for some guys. Um, as a matter of fact, it happened a couple times the other night. It's like you got two guys, you got three guys, you know what I mean? You got this inning. And um, they performed well, you know, in that game. And... Uh, you know, other guys, it's just more like go. Like, I'll get you when it's time to get you and simplify it. But I think communication is important. You know, I, th I think one thing I know about college players and probably pro players, like I hear from a lot of guys I have pro ball, like it's so different than college. You don't ever really know what's going on or what people think or want you to do. It's like I know they appreciate what we think and the info that we have for them that's going to help them improve. They always want to know where they're at, and uh, we try to do a good job of that. Uh, with, with Tommy and his, his defense, I mean, how much was he able to field this past offseason? Because I mean, he looks like a really a different player defensively yeah. these last several weeks yeah. in particular. But with the shoulder injury, I was just curious how much he was able to do in that respect. Yeah, we, probably in November we started moving his feet and getting him down and um, some hand-eye stuff. I think the credit goes to him with his body's in really good shape. Like when you can't do stuff and then, uh, you know, what you can do is eat, you know, sometimes, you know, that can, that can go bad in a hurry. But Alex Milazzo was grilling up a lot of steaks and chicken for him and he did a good job keeping his body in shape. Now I think what you're seeing is we're still, I don't want to call it rehabbing, but he's still having to add strength back that he lost. And now we're being able, get, being able to do more in the weight room with Coach McMillan, and I think there's been an immediate improvement with that. But again, great talent, super motivated, good plan, uh, competitive. Like I'll, I'll always bet on those guys, which I had no, no problem going like, hey, man, you're coming, you're playing third base. We're going to make this work. We're going to make this happen. And if you end up not being our third baseman, you're going to be able to tell me I shouldn't be our third baseman. Yeah, sure. And instead, he's just he's killed it. Yeah. It's I mean, been great. Yeah, I mean, what do you make of, like, his improvement? Where have you seen kind of the biggest growth defensively from him this year? I think the first step and then just the understanding of picking the hop. You know, that's something we worked on really hard last year. And just he had a season where he didn't play defense. And so we did a lot of stuff with machines that ball down and you got to go. And when do you take the drop step? Um, but I think the, the lateral, like the one he made on the double play on Saturday, to get his left eye past it, pick it at the lowest point, get to the bag, and then immediately get to his right leg and throw, I mean, he had to do that perfectly because the shoulder is still rehabbing. And I, I've been very pleased with the arm strength that's starting to return, too. And, you said, and he said he's done a lot of, like, footwork yes. stuff, too. Like, what are some of those, I guess, foot, how do you do footwork? Drills? Just like, agilities, you know, think of, I don't know, like, NFL combine like drills like ladders cones um, you know coach McMillan has done a good job with him and um, you know like I said just you know what's the knock if you're a DH as a freshman like if you want to be the pro player you want to be you need to add defensive a defensive resume I mean Jacob Berry you know had to do the same thing when he came here and and did and it really paid off for him you know, Dylan, you know, we moved him from right field to center field. You know, that really paid off for him. So, I mean, he knows he knew that carrot or whatever you want to call it was out there and has, has really shown that he can do it. And it's helping us win, too. You've mentioned um, Jaron McMillan, obviously, a couple times. And, and I think how they sort of kept you guys in knock on wood so far pretty, pretty healthy yeah. up at this point. Do you think they've made, like, a real impact to the health? I do. Team? I think, first off, they're good people. And I want good people in our organization and around our players. And 
what does that mean? They always have the player's best interest at heart, their development in mind, and they communicate really well with them and with our staff, and they work really hard. I mean, their availability is amazing, and um, it's been a big lift. How much do you lean on Hayden, Alex, Josh, Tommy, uh, Asher, just guys that were kind of in those big moments last year, especially against a team like this in Omaha? How much do you lean on them, just maybe not even from just a leadership perspective, but just kind of on what to expect from them with some of these guys that maybe weren't around last year? Well, I think it's important. Um, I'll give you a good example of um, the Sunday game against Xavier. Who they, Xavier played great, and they beat us two to one. And um, and it was early. I mean, it was daylight savings time and an early game, and um, bad scheduling. There's no daylight savings time in Arizona, so it's like I've already, I'd almost forgotten about it. Um, but they they immediately got the team together after that game and said, "Hey, like, not that's." It's not going to be that way, you know what I mean? Like, we're not going to win every game, but not like that. And so when you have that good player accountability, I think it lifts everybody up. You know, but with all of them, I mean, maybe with the exception of Tommy, like they're all in a little bit of an elevated role. So they're kind of, you know, finding their way in that too. Um, but they've been great. I mean, I just really, really enjoy coaching those players that – you mentioned because they all have individual futures, but they do very much care about the success of the team and have been on point and, you know, on page, I would say, with trying to help us be what we want to be. With Isaac and Jeremy, how have they specifically helped out with Brady and, you know, just getting him physically ready to do it? Yeah, that's a really good good question. I mean, um, I think Isaac did a good job of really getting to the nature of the injury, like of, of what was really going on, and then – we treated it effectively and then there was an element with coach McMillan where we had to to train him a certain way in the weight room and then Isaac came back in and then we kind of reprogrammed how he moved in his swing to get alleviate you know some of that pain so it was one of the most intensive like deals I've ever seen and they nailed it because we've tried to manage his load like he can't play every game um but we've, knock on wood, hadn't had any setbacks. And so they deserve a lot of credit for that. Have you decided on uh, starting pitching rotation for the weekend? Yeah, we're just going as we did last weekend. Roswell seems to find his groove at the plate, especially compared to the beginning of the season. What have you seen change from him, whether it be mentally or the confidence level that attributes to yeah. his improvements? Um, great kid, good player. I th- wants it badly. And in baseball, like sometimes doing more, trying more, wanting it more can work against you. And I think he just kind of settled into like he put in the work. Like he's a better player than he was a year ago at this time. I think I don't want to say trusting that because I don't think he wasn't trusting it. I think he got to like, hey, no, this is what I need to do instead of focusing. Hey, this is what I want to accomplish. And um, he's doing a good job. I, I'm really happy he's here. I'd have a hard time picturing our team without him. Catch play is something uh, Coach Yeski has emphasized pretty heavily since coming over here. Is that something that – that's the sort of drill that, I guess, you hope pays off for you in the long run of a season? It's not something necessarily it's going to you know pay dividends right away. It's more about, like, creating habits for uh, – Yeah, I mean – well, yeah, I mean, that's part of this thing. But it's like pitchers, like, that's the firing range for them. I mean, it's their target practice. And if they're going to be successful – as a pitcher, like you need to throw the ball where you're intending to throw the ball. And so you have to be intentful, you know, in your, what I would just call target practice. So, uh, I think it's been good. Like I said, I did, 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 we did not, everybody knows it's not a secret. We did not pitch the way we want to last weekend, but up until that point, and I'm not talking about results or who we played. I'm just talking about pure execution. I think it's made a, a good difference. And, um, you know, we have some, like I said, a couple things each guy needs to do to pitch well, keep targeting those, and it's his job to push them to, towards those things and put in place how we get him to do the things that we want him to do. And I know that's something he believes can can help move some guys towards one of those two things they want to do better. How competitive the league is, and no road team won last weekend on the road. Do you think that's kind of how it's going to shake out? Or the difference <laughs> at the top is going to be 
someone who sweep, gets us one sweep or yeah I, you know somebody asked i had a radio interview this morning and somebody asked me that question and it's like i'm so consumed with like like what we just talked about two things for the pitchers good practice today like i didn't even know that till like the other day and I don't even look at the standings like this time of, of year. Um, I paid attention to Florida because we were playing Florida. Like I'll pay attention to Arkansas this weekend because we're playing Arkansas next weekend. Um, but again, it's kind of that mindset of, like I said, very successful, longtime SEC coach, not an LSU coach. That hey, look, the the level headedness of what you bring to the table has to be has to be there, or this can go sideways in a hurry. Because, but it's kind of the same thing. It's like don't look too, too far down the road or dissect you know those things because let's say what happens in i don't even know if missouri is playing at home or who they're playing but like what happens at missouri this weekend has no bearing on here and really no bearing on our team so i know it's a boring answer it's just the best league by a billion like it's not even it's not even close it's the best league by far when do you start i guess peeking at the standings a little bit like is it just before the start uh, no i mean like literally like again what happens everywhere else has nothing to do with what happens in our games that weekend. Um, obviously, I'm super aware of where we're at in terms of, like, the RPI. Like, I'll look at the RPI way more than I'll look at the SEC standings. And, um, you know, like Tuesday, like, maybe it was you, Koki, asked me a question about, hey, you use this guy, you use this guy. Well, that's a team that's 17 and 6. Like, you win, and then it's, you know, you're going to you're gonna go up. And um, so – it, again, that's like for me on my own time and planning, but that's beyond behind what does the team need to do to play good, to, to win those games, to give yourself, create opportunities for you. And there's just 14 teams that are really good, so it's like it's a 30-game sprint, and I don't know that there's a whole point in looking at it, you know, it's, it's in terms of helping our team end up where, where we want to want to be. Time for two more if anyone else says anything. We're all good. Do you two. think the RPI is like a good way to sort of, I guess, help <laughs> organize everything? I mean, this is probably a question for later in the season. Yeah, no, I, I, it is It is what they view us off of. So it's, it, it matters. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's good or not. And so it's just like, I understand it. I know, you know, how it works. And that's my job to know how it works. Whether it's good or not, like, I don't know. It, like, I feel like this has been a discussion for, like, 15 years. I just know that's what we get evaluated off of. So I need to be in tune with that. Uh, when you're one of the best teams in the country, obviously you get a lot of attention nationally uh, not, and locally, of course. But uh, how do you keep that noise out of the, the locker room? How do you guys focused on the next opponent and hearing the things that people might say about, about the team because they drop a series or something? Well, they're on their phone all the time. And so they're going to see it. They're going to hear it. And – you know, it's part of growing up, like literally to that only affects you if you make it relevant. And that's a choice. And it's hard not to do that for young people. It's super hard, but it's also a choice. And so I just treat it like it's part of growing up. You know what I mean? Like if you let it affect you, it's going to affect you. If you don't, you don't. If you need to go to an extreme of like, hey, man, I'm not going to be on the internet or social media during the season like that works for some guys i mean i know major leaguers that do that that are really good that play in all-star games that are gonna go to the hall of fame and um you know the only way i try to do it is like okay what is relevant what anybody says about us is not relevant it's not you know like there's very few exceptions to that like i really care what skip Bertman thinks i really care what he thinks I would want him to say great things about me. Like, if he didn't, that would affect me. But my dad, yeah, I really care what my dad thinks at 47 years old, you know. So, um, but the other stuff, like, it's part of getting past it. What a good opportunity to play at LSU because around the country, there might be four fans that care about college baseball. Here, what a good opportunity, not only for them to get built or attention, but to learn how to deal with that. That would be the worst thing that I could do. I mean, yeah, it's like, you want to have a mutiny take away a college person's phone from them. That's not what I expected to end this. <laughs>